Hello. Hi. Everyone good? Yeah, if you want to start with the broadcasters. Jesse, you, you did meet you this morning. Uh, what have you done today in the meantime? Um, yes, it was nice to meet the, the Premier and and a lot of the local officials um, this morning. Everybody was very gracious and welcoming. They took us down to Cappuccino Street and and... Actually, the Patrick and Dan each ordered a cappuccino from a coffee shop down there. Um, and then we just had uh, a little bit of a video session uh, uh, late morning, and then we had lunch, and then we talked about training, and now we're here. So um, just trying to maximize every every moment we can here uh, while we're in Australia. Has it been a challenge maximizing preparation for games while you've been doing much, so much traveling? Yeah, it's, you know, it's not been uh, perfect in terms of the training camp, but, but at the same time, I think our mentality to work and to improve and, and the, the camaraderie of the group is so strong and we don't have in our team complainers or negative thinkers. We have a bunch of guys who are positive, uh, excited for the matches. So that part, it makes it a lot of fun to be the manager for this group. Jesse, you're getting what you need out of this trip, given the Premier League season is, is so close? Yeah, I think um, the the first two matches were, were good for us, a good test. Um, we've worked on our fitness, uh, you know, and, and so we want to maximize the last three days while we're here, uh, three, four days. So before we head back, um, guys are healthy and fit. And uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. So, yeah, so far, so good. What have you made of Crystal Palace? It looks like a good matchup on Friday night. Yeah, obviously, they've been a little bit stressed with some of the COVID issues that they've had to deal with inside their club. Um, they didn't bring everyone, uh, but they still have a strong team. And, and I saw that a lot of their guys uh, started against Man U in Melbourne and, and, and played a lot of minutes. So we'll see what, the, what they look like. But we're hopeful to get a strong team so that it's a good test for us. I don't know if you're aware, but it's a bit unusual to see blue and yellow out here. Yeah. This is usually uh, Fremantle territory, which is purple. Have yeah. you been briefed on the AFL situation here? Yeah, I heard that the Premier was risking political suicide by wearing blue and yellow. But uh, I, I, everybody's been incredible, um, incredibly welcoming. Uh, the amount of scarves and, and colors that we've seen already in, in town has been very impressive. And it was the same in Brisbane and, and also at the Gold Coast. Uh, so many of our fans coming out, showing passion for our team, talking about staying up in the middle of the night to watch us play. So uh, it's really exciting to be here, and we want to deliver one more good match for them uh, on Friday night. People are being surprised by the level of competitiveness that's been shown in these games. You know, not necessarily friendlies. Are you feeling as though that there's a, a bit of internal fight kind of going on, pushing for positions with the season so close? Yeah, well, we're all obviously privileged to be in this business, and and the the Premier League is the best in the world. Um, but there's no love lost, right? Like the the competitive. Um, drive, I think, for everyone in this league to, to be the best, to do the best at all moments is what makes the league so special. So for us, that's a, we try to make it a big part of our DNA that any time we step on the pitch that it's, it's personal and that we want to always deliver our best performance. So we have always respect for, for the opponents, but, but we want to be at our best at all times. Are your players fighting for positions on this trip? <laughs> I think it's more about establishing, um, you know, our, our way of playing, our mentality, continuing to push ourselves every day to get better and better than it is about internal competition. Obviously, that, that's always the case in professional sports. Everyone has to um, earn their way every day. It's the same for managers. Um, but I think that there's been really good work done by everybody and, and excitement for the matches. How's Archie <clears throat> and what's the general injury situation for the squad? Um, Archie is going to be on the pitch today, not training with the team, but doing some individual work with the hope that he can potentially be available for the, the match on Friday. We'll see. Um, Cody Drama has a little bit of a, a hamstring strain, but nothing. I don't think that is too drastic. Hopefully he will be available for tomorrow and Friday. And Liam Cooper is still nursing his Achilles issue, uh, which – of all things, he picked up 
training in the off season on a treadmill. So it's it's been about a month now, and we haven't really been able to get him going. But we're hopeful that here in the next days we can get him more and more on the pitch. And where are you now in your search for a striker? And did you decide that you'd do a left back as well? Yeah, I'd say we're actively pursuing both positions. Um, the striker one, I think it's been well documented that De Ketelar was a, a goal of ours, and and, I, and it's not finished yet with him. But we've also moved on to some other targets, trying to figure out which would be the best fit. If if in the end, which we which is what we believe, he will not be available. Um, and then left back, we have a, a few different candidates, and and we're just trying to evaluate exactly wh where we are with the roster and what exactly we need. Well. Um, <coughs> Good. Yeah, he's got quality. He's an explosive striker. I think he has flexibility in the positions he can play. Um, he's an intelligent player. Um, we're really excited to add him to our to our club. I think um, you know I need to get to know him more and more. He's been he's been at Thorpe Arch, training with our 21s, and we've had really good feedback so far. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting back and and getting to know him more and getting to work with him more on a daily basis. Jamie Shackleton was another man on the move yesterday. Is alone in the championship what he needs at the minute? Yeah, we, we had a good conversation. Jamie's uh, been a, an incredible story, I think, for the club because he's come through the academy. He's a Leeds boy. Um, you know, I think he's had some really good moments with the club. Uh, he's, he's, even when he came in the match for when, when we played against Brighton in our second to last ma match, I think he performed well. But everyone, I think, felt strongly, including uh, Jamie and his and his team that that he needed to get match minutes and where he and where he is in his career that was really important. So I think the loan to to Millwall is a, is a good opportunity for him. I know they're excited to have him, and you know we'll keep track of him carefully and and see his progress. Jesse, in terms of this season, obviously when you came in, uh, you were three quarters of the way through a campaign and team being set up by. Marcelo Bielsa, it was almost a kind of crisis management to, to keep the team up. Do you think with the players that have left, the new players that have come in, this is more of your team now? I don't ever really think of it as my team. I think of it as our team, and, and that's the way we operate in the club, right? But I certainly know that the support that I've gotten from the board and from Victor Orta has been uh, really strong and amazing. Um, obviously, some players that I've worked with before, um, but the scouting team, the department, the work they do to identify the types of players that we think can fit into what our model is and what we want our, our club and team to be for the future has been really good. We've identified key targets uh, for, for lots of positions, and, and then we've been able to go out and secure them with more work to be done, obviously. But I think it's a good start for us as a team working together to, to continue to build the club and the model that we think will be successful for the future. So I'm thankful to be here. Um, I know the support for me has been really strong. And, and I think together that w we will be unrelenting to find the success uh, that we know our, our fans deserve, our club deserves, and our players. Do, do you feel more able to deal with what the Premier League is? You didn't have an easy situation you weren't given an easy ride by external people, mainly to do with your accent, it seemed to me. <laughs> Were you more able to, to deal with that now and shut out the, the outside? I, I don't know that that'll ever go away, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, I think that a big part of my job is to be able to sit here at these press conferences and still represent what we are doing in a way that can uh, allow for, for us to quietly as quiet as possible for a club like Leeds that has so much what we've realized, even what I've realized on this trip, global attention, um, is for us to work uh, well and relatively calmly and, and to improve every day. That is a big part of my philosophy. It's just a process of, of becoming a, a really strong team together. And I'm lucky to have great men in, in, in the squad. And it's, it's, it's leaders that we have, and, and certainly starting with our captain, Liam Cooper, to all the, the veteran players that we have, to then even the young players and their desire and hunger to grow and get better and improve, and their belief that they've shown in me. Um, I think it stems from the belief that I've had in them 
so we, we have good relationships. We have, I think, a really healthy environment that's been created, and I'm very thankful to be part of it. We go to the middle. Uh, Jesse, um, obviously there's been a lot of talk about Rafinha and Calvary's going out, but you've done a lot of business in it. I know you said there's still more to go, but are you happy with the way things are shaping up that you can make up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, for me, I think uh, Mark Roca, Rasmus Christensen, Brendan Aronson, Tyler Adams, and Luis Sinistera have all fit into the team really good, really well. Uh, Darko Giabi is also getting more and more integrated, and he's a young player, and it's not always easy for 18-year-olds to step right into a team, but I think everybody sees his quality and, and his personality. So f for right now, I feel really strong, strongly that – that the, the group has come together well and that, uh, of course, we, we're, we've lost two big players, but I think we've added a lot of quality and we've added more depth to what we know we needed. So um, it, does, it won't make anything easier. The league is, is incredible. It's incredible. And it's a pleasure to be a part of it. It keeps you challenged, keeps you honest. It, it makes sure that you never get too far ahead of yourself. But we're hopeful that this, this group of players can help us uh, develop and create some, some good success and a, and a strong future. Forgive me if you've been asked this on another session at all, but another key player in the last few years has been Jack Harrison, and there's been speculation about him. Just wonder if you can enlighten us on his situation and whether you see it being that leads next season. Yeah, I mean, I think Jack unintentionally brought attention to the whole situation because his, for sure, his intention is to be with us. You know, and, and even when I mentioned about we listen to lots of offers for lots of players, that's the reality of what our business is. Uh, the, there's always interest in, in our players because we have quality players. We're, we're in the top league in the world. Um, but we feel strongly that, that the guys we have within our group right now um, can help us be really successful, and Jack is certainly one of those. So um, I think it's brought, I think Jack really didn't mean to, to bring any attention to it. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sure he'll have his chance to, to, to give his side of things. But I know he's happy here. I know he loves playing for the club. And, I, and he and I have a great relationship, and, I, and he knows how important I think he is to, to what we're doing here in the future. Okay. Thank Good. You Thank you, guys.